Hello, welcome to the management channel. My name is Jacques Alexis. I'm a lecturer in strategy, portfolio, project, and operations management. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to use lead and lag time in product schedules in Microsoft Project. Before we start, I'd like to know, uh, I'd like you to know that there is a difference between lead time in project management and lead time in supply chain management. We are going to talk about the difference in a different video. But in this video, we're going to talk about lead time from a project management perspective. So from a project management perspective, a lead time is an overlap between two project activities or tasks that have a relationship. A lead time will cause an acceleration of the successor activity in a finish to start relationship. You can use lead time to fast track the work of your project, or if you, if you prefer, to expedite the schedule of your project. So let me give you an example here. In this um, e-commerce platform development, I have two activities, gather testing requirements and create system test plan and test cases that are scheduled to occur in sequence. They are in a finish to start relationship. Now take a look here, finish to start relationship. However, um, do, the questions you must ask yourself, do you really need to finish gathering testing requirements before you can start working on creating the system test plan and test cases? Maybe not. Perhaps you can tell yourself, when I am almost done, a quarter or three quarter through the first activity, can I start the second activity? In other words, to some extent, do things in parallel to go faster. You use lead time to do that. So lead time is an acceleration, an overlap between two activities that have a dependency. Activity one uh, or ID 25, in this case, gather testing requirements, and activity 26, create system test plan and test, and test cases. Now, here, this is an overlap. This is a lead time. Lag time, on the other hand, is a delay between project activities or tasks that have a relationship. A lag time will cause the successor activity to begin sometime after its predecessor activity concludes. It is useful when a waiting time is required between two activities that have a dependency. Now, as you can see here, first, I have finished to start relationship, and I can actually have a lag time here, right? A waiting time between when gather testing requirements is done and when I start create system test plan and test cases. Now, why would you have a waiting time? There are many reasons for that. You could have a waiting time because it's in the nature of the work. For example, if you're developing a drug, you can't really um, go through human trial before you have FDA approval. There is a required waiting time. But, you know, it could be between any two act other activities. Sample activities here, sample scenario, is that I don't have the people who will be working on create system test plan because they're not available, they're vacations for this period of time. I have to wait for them to come back. So it could be a situation like that. Now, uh, what you need to know is in... Diagramming techniques, we use uh, in software, um, touch management software applications, what we call activity on nodes. 
All right. So there are four types of tax relationships here. Finish to start, start to start, finish to finish, and start to finish. So the first three types of task relationships are actually very common in, in project uh, schedule management. Uh, the last one, not so much. But what I'd like you to know, a lead time is most useful when you have finished to start relationship between two activities and you'd like somehow to accelerate the um, start of the successor activity. A lead time is very useful. A lag time can be used in all sorts of activities. It is a waiting time between two activities that have task relationship. Now, I'd like to show you how that's work in practice. Now, take a look here. I have two activities that I'd like to use to demonstrate this, 33 and 34. The durations of 33 is four days and the durations of 34 is five days. Now they are scheduled in a finish to start relationship. Now you can see that by looking at the Gantt view here or by selecting the task and click on, on make sure that you have the task um, tab selected here and click on information, right? And if you take a look at predecessor, you can see the relationship here is finished to start. Now, what I can say here, I can say that since gather requirements is going to take four days, I can actually start working on creating system test plan and test cases when I'm halfway through gathering requirements. So obviously here, we have to make sure that uh, we type uh, a lead time here in the lag, um, under the lag um, box here. So how do you enter a lead time in the software? It is a, a negative lag. So two days or 50%. You can say 50% through, I am going to, that's two days because the duration, uh, and you enter the, the lead time in the successor activity. <clears throat> so we have to make sure here that we have this uh, properly, uh, create system test plan and test cases. This is what we have here. All right, so we enter um, a lead time. What is the predecessor column here? All right, let's make sure we click on this. Task, select task, information, predecessor, lead time, 50%. And OK. Here we go. 50%. You have a lag. Oh, you can enter just minus two days. This is a lead time. Now, when you enter lead time, it means that you're going to do things in parallel. And when you're doing things in parallel, you may face resources problems. Because if you have one resource um, assigned to both activities, what's going to happen if those activities are going to take more than eight hours a day, you're going to have another allocation as indicated here. So it's going to be your job as a project manager to fix the other allocation. In a different video, we're going to talk about fixing our allocation. Now, this is a difference. This is an example of using lead time to accelerate the start of a successor activity. Now, let's say there is a relationship between design ERP interface and gather requirements. So as you can see here, 31, which is design ERP interface, and this activity, they have a finish to start relationship. Uh, you want to confirm that, you can right click uh, on it, right? And information, that's another way to, to get to it. And 31, 
Now you can say, well, I'm going to the durations of um, here of um, well, it's ten days. So I need a uh, two days waiting time to wait for approval of the design before I can start gathering testing requirements. So you would enter a positive two days here, and that would be a lag time. So as you see, the lag time is a plus two days. Now, as a percentage and here is a lead time, right? So uh, uh, again, Time to market is important. Um, you can expedite project activities by planning things in parallel, start to start, or using lead time. Now, that's going to be all for this video. Subscribe to the channel to receive alerts when new videos are posted. Thank you for watching.